Good morning, Austin, and the World Wide Web. Welcome to the Atheist Experience. This show is being brought to you by Atheist Community of Austin. And I can't figure out why I don't have the text on the screen, but I'm working on that, folks. It, uh, because it's going over here. Damn it. Uh, well, hang with us, folks. Uh, we <laughs> ran run into a little technical difficulties here. But this is the Atheist Experience. Uh, this is Sunday morning, 9 a.m., and we have our host, Jeff D., with our co-host, Vic Farrow, and today's guest is Martin uh, Wagner. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I totally screwed up the introduction here. That's folks. okay. It's live <laughs> television. It, this is live television. Let me hand this over to your host, Jeff D. Take it away, Jeff. Hi, folks. Ray, can we get uh, the graphics on the screen? Uh, good I'm morning. working on that right now. Welcome to the Atheist Experience. Um, we're live January 23, 2000, and uh, oh. this show is brought to you by the Atheist Community of Austin. Give me one second. What's uh, up? Ray, you have to put the cut button up there on the switcher, and that'll put the graphics on the air. <laughs> this is <laughs> Ray's <laughs> second week in the control room, so we're... All right, now back up. up. Page, hey. page down. Or page, yeah, page down on the <laughs> Whoa! What's that? <laughs> Hello. Your cable there TV you go. is experiencing difficulties. <laughs> Resist the temptation to read or talk to loved ones. Do not <laughs> attempt sexual relations, as years of TV radiation have left your genitals withered you and useless. <laughs> well, I'll be damned. <laughs> you can switch through the page uh, on the CG to get to the uh, one you want. <laughs> this is Ray's on-air Thank tutorial, you, folks. <laughs> we are so live. Yeah, this is great. Okay. All right. What did I say today? Was January twenty third. Twenty third. That would be make this a Sunday, right? Yeah. So this is our Y two K glitch. I guess. <laughs> yeah. It took us a few weeks for it to for it to kick in. Uh, we the uh, ATA has weekly meetings Sunday mornings at the Hot Jumbo Bagel Shop. They go much much more smoothly than this. Uh, the Hot Jumbo Bagel Shop is at three hundred seven West Fifth, and the meetings start at ten thirty, right after the end of our show except for the first Sunday of each month when we have our lecture series at 11 a.m. at First Cafeteria. The next, next lecture will be on Sunday, February 6. ACA board meetings are at our regular uh, weekly meetings at noon, right after the regular meeting on the second Sunday of every month. Uh, the board meetings are open to all members, but you can only vote if you're on the board. The next board meeting will be February 13. If you shop at Randall's and they, you have one of those uh, Randall's cards, you can tell them to, uh, that you want to donate to the Atheist Community of Austin, uh, and our number is 5158 as a nonprofit organization. Uh, you can have them direct 1% of your purchases to our group. The uh, Godless Gamers meets every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. at the home of Vic Farrow. And, uh, for upcoming events, we have a blood drive on the 29th. That would be uh, uh, next this coming next Saturday, Saturday. Yeah. at the Regional Blood Center on North Lamar at 10 a.m. Uh, for more information, call our voicemail at 371-2911 or visit our website at www.atheist-community.org. This show can also be seen on the World Wide Web. Set your browser to www.spring.net. Now, of course, we've had serious technical difficulties with uh -huh. that over the last <laughs> few weeks. As far as I know, it hasn't yeah. actually gone out for three weeks. Uh -huh. But so. that's going to get ironed out. Tell your friends that live out of state uh, that they can watch our show uh, on that channel. Okay. Cool. So we're, into <laughs> <laughs> we're actually into the full show now. Uh, our guest today is Martin Wagner. Hi there. ACA member and not on camera. And I'm sure <laughs> at some point uh, Ray will cut to me. This damn technical equipment. Uh-huh. Can we get camera two? Or three. Or three. Or three. Well, three, I'm not Either sure where three is aimed. Uh, oh, two, okay. that's good. There's Martin. <laughs> oh, hi. Okay. That's right. Martin. That's, okay. Uh, I'm used to being on that side of things, and so I'm... That's right. Martin yeah. has, has... So I'm usually the one over the headset yelling at Ray, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so and but rather loudly, too. Oh, like, distractingly loud. Okay. Well, I was going to mention that. Okay, well, now I know. Thank uh, you. <laughs> we have some old business. Okay. Uh, every once in a while, there's things that come up on uh, on uh, uh, earlier shows that need to be revisited, and uh, and here's one of them. One of our callers last week said a couple of things that I would like to comment on further. At one point, she uh, this caller uh, recited the Bible quote about faith being the substance of things hoped for and the evidence mm. of things not seen. Right. I responded by pointing out that hope is not a substance, 
we know what substances are. They're made of molecules, and hope mm -hmm. isn't made of molecules. And that evidence is, by definition, definition, things which we do see. So to speak of evidence of things not seen is a contradiction in terms. But after the show at the bagel shop, we had a visitor who asked me, what about black holes? Right, and that I was a very that. good question. Black holes neither emit nor reflect visible light, so our sense of sight is useless for perceiving them. But does that mean that the existence of black holes must be taken on faith? Well, no. Sight, which is our ability to perceive objects by detecting visible light, is not the only sense at our disposal. The, sm uh, the smell of smoke can be evidence of an unseen fire, but to equate odors with faith would be silly. In the dark, you may grope for a light switch, but if your sense of touch detects the shape of the switch, that's not faith either. Touch, smell, taste, and hearing are senses, just as vision is a sense. So are any number of senses which we don't personally possess, but which we can construct artificially, such as the ability to perceive x-rays, which is one of the lines of evidence by which we've been able to detect the presence of black holes. To draw the line at vision, and say that anything you perceive through other senses is faith, because it's evidence that just doesn't happen to be seen, would be absurd. So when I responded to that Bible quote, I was giving the caller and the Bible the benefit of the doubt. I was assuming that the word see was being used as a synonym for sense, and that the phrase really meant things not sensed, instead of literally things not seen. If I was wrong in cutting them that slack, and the phrase is meant to be taken literally, then it's absurd because that would mean that faith is anything we hear, smell, touch, taste, or detect with man-made devices. Power compels you! <laughs> right. On the other hand, if I was right in cutting them that slack, then the phrase is absurd because evidence is, by definition, that, wi that which has been sensed. The caller also brought up the Bible quote about people needing to come to Jesus as little children that unless you think like a child, you won't be able to believe in him. But what is it about the way children think that makes their way of thinking necessary for belief in Jesus? I would say it's exactly the same thing that makes children pro prone to belief in Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, the Boogeyman, monsters under their bed, and so on. Children are not as good as adults at distinguishing fantasy from reality. <laughs> Thank you, children. <laughs> Our disembodied children. The adorable <laughs> atheist children. <laughs> if the caller's point was that to believe in Jesus, we've got to abandon the ability to distinguish fantasy from reality, then of course I agree. Although sometimes <laughs> it's interesting about kids. I mean, there, there are some things you can't pull the wool over their eyes about. I think sometimes kids, you give them, they can be given short shrift. And um, I was, uh, a few years ago, I was going to a, a comic show in Baltimore, and on the plane I had the great uh, fortune or misfortune, uh, as it were, of I was sitting next to some minister, uh -huh. and we ended up more or less speaking the whole time about uh, uh, God and faith and what it was, and, and um, it was interesting that very little that he said, um, you know, had anything in the way of internal consistency to his arguments. It would just go back and forth and back and forth. But then, um, uh, it was on the window seat was, uh, was a little boy, uh, probably about six or seven years old, and, and after talking to me for a while, and he got tired, and then, and then I heard him talking to this child, and, and the child was saying things like, well, but where is God, and what do you know about you know, da, 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 and this little boy? And, and then the, the, the minister turned to me, and he said, well, he's asking all the same questions you were. And I was like, kids aren't stupid. In <laughs> some, I mean, they're, they're not. not. I they're think, not. I think, and I think what you're seeing there is that, is that up to a certain point, kids have not been indoctrinated into right. just not asking those questions yeah. yet. Right. Yeah. Right, but there is yeah. a the, but there is a whole thing about um, obedience to authority, which I think is at the root of a lot of yeah. Christian belief. Yeah. And um, when you have authority figures such as parents, family, ministers, basically pounding it into your head from infancy that you must believe this and you must believe that and this is true and that's true and 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 don't ask questions about it, just believe it. Um, you know, people are like that, and and even into adulthood, you know, just. Uh, Random ab blind obedience to authority is one Bad. of our less um, admirable traits as, as humans. And it's if you mean I respect my superiors no matter who they are, and I, I obey orders blindly and unquestioningly. <laughs> yes, yes I do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, as always, uh, Arlo makes the a, point. I had a similar airplane experience where I, we weren't sitting next to a preacher, but I was peering out the window. I must have been about five. 
and peering out the window looking for God. Of course, he wasn't there. Uh -huh. And um, I remember when I started asking questions like, you know, well, where is God? How do you know that God is existence? I, I immediately got shut up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a child, you don't. You're not allowed to. Talk yeah. About you're not. Like you're not allowed to, to inquire. And they won't answer the questions. They'll just tell you, you know, you're, you're yeah. being a bad boy. That's just misbehaving. Yeah. yeah. Hey, it's when I was a kid, I always thought the picture of Colonel Sanders on the KFC sign was God, but <laughs> some people just went along with his it. Beard, <laughs> yeah, his beard was too short, Arlo. Oh, is that, oh, yeah. Yeah, and he had chicken, you know. <laughs> right. He was dressed in white. <laughs> that's a dead giveaway. But yeah, but that's uh, that caller last week um, who, oh. who asked that question specifically. Yeah. It's partly the reason why I'm guesting today, because last week, <laughs> those, of you, those of you who watched last week's show, no, we had a, well, that woman really wasn't um, quite a, the nut job that the, uh, the, 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 later, next the later woman was. <laughs> but it, it, it was a very, it, we had two calls specifically. Well, actually, there were three, but there were two that specifically became rather emotional, rather heated, and especially the last one um, in which I, uh, the, the woman, I think, just came completely unglued and um, simply would not listen to anything that uh, Howard Thompson, who was sitting here, you know, he gave a very succinct, I think, argument for some points, and it just apparently went, you know, like that. Yeah, he, or explained, maybe just to her, he explained to her that there's no such thing as magic, and she uh -huh. responded by asking, so where does the magic come from? Yeah, something like <laughs> that. And it was the, the whole argument of, uh, you know, um, you should, well, she kept harping on, you have to believe in God, you have to believe in God, you have to. Yeah. And, and, yeah. You, and, very reasonably, and taking it really personally. And very reasonably, yes. you asked, well, what's your proof and what's your evidence? And she said something along the lines of, the very fact we're having this conversation is proof yeah. of... She, she, had, she drew this connection to her uh, child. Apparently, apparently she'd have, had a difficult pregnancy, and her child mm -hmm. survived. And she's gi given her God credit for yeah. the survival Didn't of her child. Uh, and when we... Tr when we were like, you know, disputing the rationality of believing in God, yeah. she took it personally as if we were telling yeah. her that her child wasn't really alive. Yeah, or something. That's not the point. It was difficult to really pin down where she was coming from, but uh, I thought you said that she was premature, didn't she say that? Is that what she said? She had, had, she she had a premature child. She, yes. would, she, was she a had premature. had a premature child. Yes. Oh, she had had a premature child. Yeah, that's child. what I, yeah. that's oh, what okay. I heard. Oh, okay. She had had a premature but child, essentially and, uh, it had survived, and so that was evidence yeah. of God and not modern Oh, and we, she was specifically asked, what about, you know, credit for the doctors? Yeah. And she said they didn't deserve any. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they strange. couldn't have done what they did had God not given them that magical power. Now, it's I, not I, a magical yeah, power. As little that, as that ability, medical science, is something we have painstakingly extracted from reality by hard work Absolutely. and hard thought and Absolutely. experimentation. Yeah. Period. Yeah. And but as little as 70 years ago, her baby would probably have died. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Or, and, and, and then it would have been God's will. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. I have a, I have a news story <laughs> kind of dovetails nicely with that discussion, but before I do that, did we do a phone check? Yes. We did? Okay. We're cool on the phone? Okay. okay on the phone. They uh, might work. But before you get into that, just, yeah. to, just to finish up, but essentially those callers, I think, are sort of the reason why I'm guesting today, because on, in our social gatherings and various parties that we get together at, I've often joked to Jeff and Ray and anyone who'll listen that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, for Howard, who's also working, who works Camera 3 and, and who got me into the show in the first place, um, you know, sometimes we're standing back there and it can be so frustrating. We just want, you know, some, some callers will call up and they'll just advance the most absurd ideas and, and it's just, you just want to rip your headphones <laughs> off and run out and grab a mic. And, and you do that. <laughs> and, well, last week I could contain myself no longer. And uh, I think on three separate occasions I ran back into the sound room and shoved poor Arlo out of the way and, and <laughs> grabbed the mic and went and had, had a say so or two. And, and um, particularly the woman who came up with the evidence of uh, the, uh, the substance of things hoped for. Yeah. You know, which I think we, I mean, come on. I know there are a lot of men in society who would probably hope for a multi-million dollar mansion with an Olympic-sized swimming pool uh, chock full of naked dolls, cowboy cheerleaders. Okay? <laughs> yeah! But now, now, does that have substance? No. I mean, a lot of people might right. hope for it. I don't know who. Right. But, you know, it's, I think it's not sub substance. It's nothing substantial. I, I think what they're really getting at, and there is, no. there is something valid there, Very silly. right? Yeah. You know, I mean, if you're trying to accomplish something and it's hard, yeah. right, and you're not sure if you can, you people that tend to be successful do tend to go ahead and and keep trying right yeah. and there's some there's something there that is something but to which but to call that substance yeah. is ridiculous well the hope itself is not what a hope can be and what hopes are are a goal towards which you work to
to make them successful. And, and you can, you can yeah. call part of what they're talking about hope, and yeah. the hope is a reasonable thing, but you mm. shouldn't confuse it with fact. Yes. And uh, part of it is, uh, you know, perseverance or, uh, you know, um, self-esteem. Exactly. And that is a valid thing as far as it goes, but you don't want to mistake that for something else either. Yeah. Um, which now dovetails perfectly into, into <laughs> my article. Incompetence is bliss, say researchers. <laughs> there are many incompetent people in the world, but a Cornell University study has shown that most incompetent people do not know that they are incompetent. Well, that was people fun. who do things badly, according to David A. Dun Dunning, a professor of psychology at Cornell, are usually supremely confident in their abilities, <laughs> more confident, in fact, than people who do things well. Mm. And now this surprises me that it was necessary for there to be a study to reveal this, because I think anybody with two brain cells to rub together already realized this, but it's nice that there is now statistical evidence. And we're getting a little washed out on the camera. What is that about? Yeah, Doesn't that look a little? Yeah, Iris is really down just a bit. Okay. Yeah. One reason that the ignorant also tend to be blissfully self-assured, the researchers believe, is that the skills required for competence are often the same skills necessary to recognize competence. <laughs> the incompetent, therefore, suffer doubly, said the researchers. Um, not only do they reach erroneous conclusions and make unfortunate ch uh, choices, but their incompetence robs them of the ability to realize it. This deficiency in self-monitoring skills, the researchers said, helps explain the tendency of the humor impaired to persist in telling jokes that are not funny, <laughs> of day traders who repeatedly jump into the market and repeatedly lose, mm. and of the politically clueless who continue to hold forth at dinner parties on the finer points of campaign strategy. Some college students, they say, in, uh, uh, evidence a similar blindness. After doing badly on a test, they spend hours in the professor's office explaining why the answers to the test were wrong. <laughs> uh, in a series of studies, uh, uh, Kruger and Dunning tested their theory of incompetence. They found that subjects who scored in the lowest quatrille on tests in logic, English grammar, and humor were also most likely to gro grossly overestimate how well they had performed. Um, and uh, it goes on, not only did they overestimate their own abilities, but they underestimated the quality of competent work. When, you know, they were given good writing samples, people who had bad writing skills were given good writing samples and asked, how good is this? Mm -hmm. They thought it was garbage. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is, <laughs> yeah, I, this is so obvious, and, and, it, and it, it directly goes into, you know, the, we argue with fundamentalists about evolution. And it's clear the fundamentalists have no clue what yeah. evolution is really yes, all they about. Yes, they do. They know exactly what it's about, and they're trying to redefine it so that they... Can You're cutting them um, slack, and that's an honorable yeah. thing to do. Uh -huh. it, it's a I, I don't really see evidence the, of that. The thing. creation I science is a tactic. It's just a way to try to get people who don't know or don't understand evolution to not think about it and come back over to their side. Yeah, I would, I would take issue it's, with that. I think that there is a sinister. genuine failure at a fundamental level to understand the basic precepts of evolutionary biology. That could be true in some cases, but in some cases it's... Well, I mean, oh, and there's, a, there's, a, there's an alternate story that is circulated in that, you know, in that subculture. Mm -hmm. And th what they're doing is they're latching on to an attractive alternative that's presented to them. But I don't think most of the people that talk about this really understand anything about what evolution well, is really yeah. about. When, I'm they actually the us, ones when they come at us with, you know, you know, how come a horse doesn't give birth to a frog? Right. They clearly don't know what they're talking and about. And I, I, I the saw the, this like little roundtable discussion one night on, on Trinity. I'm a masochist like, like Arlo. Sometimes we watch <laughs> Trinity in these Christian oh, yeah. TV shows. I yeah. watch Trinity too. Oh, so. it's a blast. But you know, they, they so uh, one, one, one of these roundtable discussions they had, they were of course working from the Christian presupposition that we are the ultimate. Yeah. You know, and so they were mocking right. evolution, saying things like, well, if evolution's true, when, when did we stop evolving? You know. I think, you know, they, they, seem to, <laughs> they seem to have this idea that evolution is something that happens over a weekend. Yeah. And um, Richard Dawkins, this right here, and I'm going to hold this up for um, Howard's yeah, They uh, think this, of course, because... Uh, this is probably one of the seminal works on evolutionary biology. It explains, I think, very el eloquently a lot of what, is, what it is all about, why it works. And the title, of course, uh, comes from, it's a rebuttal to the Christian um, analogical design argument about 
oh, well, if you have a wristwatch and it's how, how so many intricate parts and that was built, so why should we assume that life would blah, 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 blah. Um, that addresses even that argument. But it is, um, this is available, of course, at any good bookstore. But he makes the point um, that, um, I, that, that thought just went. <laughs> um, well, he just addresses at, at right down to its most basic level and then works from yeah. all the way through. And but it can be a, a difficult book to get into if your week, most advanced weekly reading is TV Guide or People Magazine. But yeah. if you really want to know a lot of these questions, but particularly the questions that creationists always ask, and they never seem to get. I mean, this addresses it very beautifully. Yeah, I think it's very significant that um, that there's this whole idea that there is such a thing as Christian music, and you know, Christian programming. There's Christian literature, and there's you know, there's there's Christian donut shops, and there's yeah. Christian really? auto repair. Yeah. What is the the effect of that is to isolate these people from sources of contradictory information. Right. And I want to read this next section here. Okay. Uh, in some cases, Dunning pointed out, an awareness of one's own inability is inevitable. In a golf game, when your ball is heading into the woods, you know you're incompetent, he said. <laughs> but in other situations, okay. feedback is absent or at least ambiguous. Even a humorless joke, for example, is likely to be met with polite laughter. And social norms prevent most people, when faced with incompetence, from blurting out, you stink, <laughs> truthful <laughs> though the assessment may be. Yeah. And I think that, that, this, that the, you know, I, this whole practice of Christians isolating themselves from, con from competing points of view has the effect of presenting them only with this false positive feedback. Right? Mm -hmm. They only see this one argument, and everybody's saying, oh, this one argument, our argument, is oh so right. So they never learn what their argument is, ar is really ar supposed to be arguing against. Yeah. They never learn the details. Yeah. Um, my parents, Methodist ministers, That's they've right. got a giant library full of theology books. Mm -hmm. Not a single book in there about atheism by an atheist. Mm -hmm. They have no clue what atheism is. Yeah. And you know, that, so what do you expect? Yeah, and atheism is so widely misunderstood. Right? Yeah. Well, it, it's deliberately misunderstood. Yeah. See, now you're cutting them slack wait, again. Wait, and wait, I did, made the mistake <laughs> of doing that last week, now, didn't I? Wait, I think, I think both you guys are right. It sounds <laughs> like, see, Vic, it sounds like you're describing the people that are pretty much experts at debating. And, and then you guys are describing yeah. the people that listen to those. The things. average, yeah. yeah. There are people out yeah. there who point. will take yeah. the ignorance of other people and use it as a tool to, to indoctrinate them into their to their thinking, exactly. mm -hmm. and, yeah. and th this is the kind of people that we deal with a lot because they're mm -hmm. trying to, and they like to, they like to talk to atheists, and particularly on our show, because you know they're trying to make us look bad. They they're no successful at doing it, but let's uh, let's take this call. Okay, oh. Paul. Yes, sir. Hi, how, how are, are you today? Good. How are you? Fine. Okay, good. I haven't had my coffee yet. I just woke up. Uh, <laughs> is that right? I, I try so to watch a show um, every Sunday. Uh -huh. That's always really good I like watching it and all and uh, I wanted to comment pretty much on what you're all talking about now you know about how um, you know people it's like they can't see the uh, argument or they can't see the uh, intellectual part uh, of your argument that yeah. you try to make towards your points and you know the old exp uh, expression by I think it was Voltaire, he said, um, if there were no God, it would be necessary to invent him. I'm yeah. sure you all heard of that. Heard that yeah. And um, Seems like that's what occurred. <laughs> um, I think you all um, approach um, the non-belief in God in, um, like, on one level, and, um, like, the Christian side is, like, more on an emotional level. And that is so hard to uh, try to break through or try to, um, I don't know how you would um, go about trying to convince people on an emotional level, you know. Yeah. I, I tried to and, point out. You know, that's the, that's the thing. It's like people are so emotional about things, you know, and they, they can't. Uh, it's like you make, a, you know, your point on an intellectual level, and their point is, like, like the Christian Precisely. side would be. 
different from your own, you know? Yeah, you're very right about that, Paul. I tried to point out to someone just last week that, that when you're having a, a rational discussion about any topic, it is really an argument. You're, you're, you're pushing one point against another point, and then somewhere you weed out the nonsense and get to the truth. And then they didn't quite get it, I guess. But yeah. uh, it, it always turns around on an emotional level. If you don't yeah. automatically agree with what they're saying, and yeah. it comes back well, as an attack. I mean, yeah. I mean, the argument's not an attack. I'm arguing with you over this particular point, but I'm not attacking you personally. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying that you're a dumbass. I'm just saying that you know, mm -hmm. I have this particular view, you have that particular view. Somewhere along the line, the truth has to come out of this. Yeah. And yeah. But that's, I think that what you're talking about, Paul, is exactly what we saw on last week's episode when we had, if, especially our final caller was uh, that woman who just, uh, by the end of it, she was histrionic. I mean, she yeah. was beyond the pale. She was simply just shouting and shouting, we, and guys were going, ma'am, hello. And, and it just got to the point where she was just no longer listening. Yeah. And um, that level of anger, I mean, and it was anger, genuine anger. And, and that was what was really disturbing to me, was that level of anger mixed with that sort of intense zealotry is the sort of thing that has, in history, you know, led to wars and killing people and all that. Yeah, there you go, yeah. And um, not to say that that woman would ever do anything like that, but she was yeah. clearly, I mean, a, a suitable case for treatment. All this tension between us is stupid. <laughs> there's just no need for it. I mean, you're tense and I'm tense, and there's just absolutely no need for it. I'm not tense. <laughs> of course you're tense, you rectum faced pygmy. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I don't know. It, you know, it seems to me it would be hard for you all to um, to, to convince. Well, you're never going to convince the fundamentalists, those yeah. who are just so so involved. Well, no, but the fact I guess that we rile them up sometimes can be just <laughs> entertaining. Yeah they're, yeah, they're their own worst enemies when they yeah. lose control. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I've had I've had people suggest to me that what we really need to do is is you know whip up some kind of. Um, emotionally positive message for atheism. And right. of course I'm in favor of finding positive things about, a, mm -hmm. about atheism and talking about them. But what I'm not in favor of is taking advantage of people's susceptibility to emotional arguments and turn them into atheists emotionally without mm -hmm. them understanding what it's all about. Yeah. You know, yeah, so well, that's kind of what the Christians do. Yeah, right, right. And we, as, yeah, as atheists, it's, it's we don't emotional do arguments them on first, their side and, and then and then try to try to keep it on an intellectual level. You know, mm -hmm. once they yeah, they they out. get you emotionally first, mm -hmm. so you're really only predisposed to believe a certain yeah. set of arguments, and then they they pile on all the you know their what they what constitutes yeah. reasoning for them. Yeah. Um, you know how like these um, people come around to your house and they have those little pamphlets. Mm. The little, like, one or two pamphlets. Yeah. Uh -huh. You guys make up something uh, like that that you there, can hand out? Okay. There are such things. Uh, there's an organization called the Freedom From Religion Foundation. You can find How them. What you got? Um, yeah, I guess if There has been a lot of discussion. Money, right? Nothing actually done yet. We have a pamphlet for our group, but it's not. It's not arguments. It's but just you know what the ACA is. But about. the idea of making out a little miniature tract and, and is uh, a great idea. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, just think about it. You know, you, know, you have to get the me message out some way. And when I, yeah, and whenever yeah, we're out on like Sixth Street it. and there's the guy standing on the street corner we handing out theirs, we'll trade them. There's, a, there's <laughs> an atheist group in California. I talked with these guys at the Atheist Alliance convention here in Austin last year, year right. before. Yeah. Uh, and they they have a whole line of those things, and they're really very cool. Um, uh, so I'm all in favor of that. And we had our last lecture was on the subject of of actively trying to promote atheism, yeah. and uh, yeah. and I took the pro side on that. <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of people, a lot of atheists have a immediate negative reaction to that concept because one of the things that's most annoying about Christians is how they're in your face all the time, and I can certainly understand uh, it not wanting to attract that kind of negative attention to atheism, yeah. but on the other hand. Uh, we have as much right, if we think that we're on to the, the right way to look at things and we care about our, our fellow man, I think we not only have a right to speak about it, I think we have a, a social imperative to speak about it, as much as Christians do. Mm -hmm. right. I, think they, I think it is right for them, if they really believe what they're saying, yeah. to go out and try to convince other people. I think that's correct. Yeah. I think I they're mean, going about it the wrong way, and I think they're, that they're actually wrong. But, yeah. but uh, they do have the right to express their views. Uh, yeah. But they shouldn't uh, deny us ours. And like I said, that woman, the, the, the wild woman last week who called, I, I think Ray said the first thing that she belted out when she, he picked up the phone with her was, 
why we were wasting valuable precious airtime and <laughs> with, with these godless horrible heathen views and we should be out doing positive things in the community and blah 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 yeah. blah blah. It's, it would be because non-Christians have rights too. Yeah, and, and, I, and the, the, her whole oh rant no. I'm, I'm saying, I'm not hearing a whole lot of positivity coming from her. I mean, she's yeah. just <laughs> angry and screaming and ranting. What are you doing lately that's positive? Right. You know, I just, you just sound to me like a very angry person who likes spilling your bile on people who don't believe yeah. the way you believe. In her opinion, positive that's, equals Christian. That's not positive. Not Christian yeah. equals negative. Yeah. You know. Okay. Yeah, you'll have a good day. Yeah, thanks right, for calling, thanks, Paul. Thanks for calling. Bye-bye. Right, bye-bye. Um, there was an interesting thing on NPR as I was driving in this morning. I don't know if any of the rest I of you caught it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they were interviewing a researcher who was trying to pin down the functional advantage of emotion hmm. and dispute the idea that what you want to take into a decision-making process is pure reason. And he pointed out that... that uh, Emotions are something akin to a sense that we have where we can tell, like, when other people are in pain. Empathy was a, a great example, mm -hmm. and the one mm -hmm. that, they, that they talked about a lot. Uh, the sense that another person is in pain, I mean, that's useful information, right? Yeah. And you do want to have that when you apply sure. your reason to yeah. a situation. Uh, there are, there are um, examples of patients with various brain uh, disorders or injuries that lose their ability to empathize, mm -hmm. and they become less rational, not more. Yeah, right. I read a book. On that but once. we got to understand what that is. It's not the the um, the. Uh, it's not the. It's not evidence the, the that sense emotional sense of empathy emotion. by itself that tells right. us how we should react. It's just evidence, right? Mm -hmm. In the same sense that a mirage may look like it exists. Uh, exists. Yeah. Our sense of sight may tell us that it's there. But we, but it can be wrong. Mm -hmm. So it should be emotions should be viewed as just a tool for the decision making process, not mm -hmm. as the end unto themselves. Right. I would argue that a person who has a good handle on the use of his or her reason will have just as a end byproduct of that appropriate emotional responses to things. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with being yeah. excited about things that you think are true. Oh, yeah. The goal ought to be to think that the right things are true, the yeah. think that the actual true things are true, yeah. and not get all emotionally bent out of shape about uh, uh, yeah. beliefs that don't happen to correspond with reality. Mm -hmm. Shall we take another call? Um, you're the host. I know you got Let's news, but... I, the, the, the news can wait. Now we're, now we're backed up on the phones. Hello, Rock. Oh, hi, hi guys. How you doing? Hi. It's fine. Morning. I want to talk a little bit about you know this rational discussion and, and why sometimes people perceive it as an attack, even though we, we know it's not an attack. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm not a psychologist, and I'm just you know I don't know much about this, but I, I do like kind of the Maslowian view of the hierarchy of needs, where people you know first you need oxygen, then you need food and water, you need shelter, and so forth. And it's only after you deal with fundamental basic needs that you get to the point where you can think about things rationally and think about things that I think Mas Maslow used the word self-actualization. Mm -hmm. I mean, pretty much in our society, by definition, most atheists have gotten to the point of self-actualization in terms of really thinking through what's what. And a lot of people, their, their religious structures are tied in to their lower needs. And when you say, you know, there may not be a God or there is not a God, there's no evidence for a God, you may be tying into something saying, hey, you're threatening my lower, you know, needs. You're threatening right. my house, you're, my you're, you're saying, whatever. You're whatever. You're basically telling them their whole life is a lie. And that's, uh, you know, that, that, yeah, it's not going to feel good. Yeah, no, it, and, is, but it isn't. And, and it, it's a problem. I mean, um, you know, I'm, I, I do most of my prophetizing more in the uh, libertarian ranks mm -hmm. where we get people to try to say the, the, uh, the notion of big government taking care of everybody is fallacious and actually harmful. And yet when you say that to certain people who are really tied into what the government provides, they take it as an attack, right. even though it is a rational argument. Yeah. And it's the same kind of thing. And so this idea of being able to uh, perceive you know, how people are reacting and so forth is very important if you're going to be successful getting these kind of messages across mm -hmm. and helping people realize that you, know, you may have to go back several steps with people in terms of being willing to help them reconstruct their lives to deal with information like this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't want to get into a political discussion about libertarianism. Oh no, but, I don't either. But but, yeah. but but rather than just let your statement stand, I do want to mention that I'm not a libertarian. Oh, I know. And that. I think a lot of libertarians take that that point of view way too far, and like miss actual 
uh, practical benefits to government that, uh, that, that I think are valid and they think are not by definition. But, let, but I just want to state my, my, my opinion that there is another point of view there, and let's drop that. Yeah, that's because this show is not about yeah. politics. Yeah, or it's not. I know your show is, isn't about politics. It is an example, though, of someone trying to use a rational basis right. for changing people. No, I yeah. certainly and agree. There are people the who would just same kind of issues. Yeah, for yeah. People I, to, to listen. I right. certainly agree that there are valid libertarian viewpoints that get rejected for emotional <laughs> reasons. So uh, I, I'm with you there. Yeah. Uh, now I want to. I want to comment on a couple other things you said. Sure. Uh, I also don't want us to make some kind of blanket statement that all atheists are like successful people. I have met atheists that are losers. Okay. <laughs> it can happen. Uh, so yeah, atheism um, doesn't automatically give you a rational, calm mind. That yeah, there are there are. I mean, a lot of Christians that call in and say, you know, I used to be an atheist. What they really mean, in almost all cases, I didn't used to go to church. Is I didn't used to go to church. <laughs> right. I used to ignore the whole thing. Wow. I n and they, what they do not mean is that I have thought deeply about these issues. Yeah. And uh, there are a lot of people out there who are technically atheists because they don't believe in God who have not thought deeply about these issues or about yeah. much of anything else. Yeah. Okay, and there are also that can happen. There are also some people out there who call themselves atheists simply because they have developed, a, once again, it's emotionally based as opposed yeah. to rationally based, yeah. and it's rooted in this sort of hatred of Christians and Christianity or maybe it's some rebellion against their family or they just, you know, just the idea of church and priests and, and that sort of thing just just really makes them mad and so it's not so it, it's just a, another form of maybe you know teen rebellion against your parents but now you're focusing it against yeah. the church and it's just an anger towards something that uh, makes them mad for whatever personal little issues they have oh yeah that's that's it I but it's that, not rational atheism that's right you're right in, in both directions that can be true that <laughs> yeah. and I think the thing that most people are tied into is they have these strong connections with their family and that you're right, it can be pro or con. I mean, when I was brought up, my family was very deeply Roman Catholic, and it was a shambles, and I was just completely turned off to Catholicism and anything like re organized religion mm -hmm. by the travails that my family went through, right. be mainly because of a lot of the dictates of the Catholic Church. So you're right, For a lo it wasn't until I was in my mid-20s that I really sat down and really learned enough about myself and the universe to start to make a rational decision about this. But up till then, I was an atheist just because I didn't like, yeah. you know, what it done to my family. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I absolutely can relate to that. Mm -hmm. And so that's that, that's the point. But it, but I think a lot of people who are hooked in are hooked in positively through family experiences too. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so an a, a perceived attack on religion could be a perceived attack on your their parents or their yeah, yeah. Their yeah siblings I've, and I, so forth. I've heard Christians say things like, uh, for example, about Madeleine Murray O'Hare when she was very prominent. I heard them. I, I used to hear Christians say things like. Well, she obviously knows there's a higher power, otherwise she wouldn't be out there fighting it so strongly. You know, so, <laughs> you know, so things like that, you know. Just <laughs> no, it, 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 there are a lot of people who are just not able to rationalize and hear the arguments, and they are incompetent about yeah. thinking about this stuff. But there's a deeper problem, because there are a lot of people who can. Right, although be careful with your terminology. Rationalism and rationalizing things are not the same. Oh, yeah, good process. point. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, yeah. What I meant to say is that there are people who are capable of thinking about this stuff rationally, but they've got too many other issues in the way before they can I get there. I absolutely agree. Yeah, and that, you know, I, I don't think the Christians are stupid. Right, this, exactly. this thing we just read, that I just read about the, uh, about incompetence, it, the incompetence is different from stupidity, right? You can be really smart in one field mm -hmm. and know nothing about some other field but make the mistake of thinking that you do. Right, and that then you get a smart person who's incompetent in some area. That happens. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, not only do I, I want to point out that the article itself is not an attack on Christians or even an attack on incompetent people <laughs> calling them stupid. It yeah. doesn't mean they're stupid. It means there is a tendency when you don't know what yeah. you're talking about to overestimate how much you know about what you're talking about. Right, right. and I, I, my point is simply it also points out the challenge of getting these ideas across. Yeah. It's yes. a huge task. And yeah. you know, of course we appreciate the guys the job you guys did. I, I think a lot of a lot of believers are very intelligent. They're great at rationalizing. Mm -hmm. Um I, and, yeah. It, and yeah, the, it's not that they're stupid, it's that they really don't know the point of view that they're arguing against. They're they just, don't understand it. Their, their arguments come from faulty presuppositions. Right. Like, I, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, you know, and she's actually not a Christian, but, you know, she, like, like many people, you know, just has vague concepts of higher powers or what have you. 
But, you know, she asked me a question directly. She said, okay, as an atheist, you know, if you don't believe in the supreme being or if you don't believe that we were created by an intelligent force or what have you, then, you know, then how did we get to be the way we are? Where did our emotions come from? How did we, be, how did we, where did our intellect and our ability to reason things come from? And, where did, and, and I, I stopped her and I said, listen to the questions you're asking me. The questions that you're asking me are rooted in the presupposition that the qualities that make us human, our emotions, our intellect, our, our ability to do deductive things, these are things that had to have come from outside of us. That's the presupposition. The pre it's not rooted in, I think, what, what, I, what, what my, I'm of the opinion, that all these things are simply part of our nature as human yeah. beings. But those questions that theists and believers ask are rooted in a presupposition, which I think is faulty at its core, which is that these are things that we couldn't develop on our own. They had to be right. given to us externally from an external right. source. Like all the Christians who call us up and say, well, if you're atheists, then your life has no meaning. Life is meaningless. And and I say, well, where do you, what is the basis for your presupposition right. that life can only have meaning if that meaning is externally imposed upon us by a supernatural third party? And what's if you that? believe that, yeah. what's the meaning of life for God? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. What's the external higher force giving him a meaning for existence? Yeah. Maybe he hasn't so got one. Poor God. Poor, yeah. That's pretty much <laughs> All right. Thanks for yeah. your call. Uh, yeah. We want to invite you down to the bagel shop. I don't know if you've been before, but uh, uh, we meet yeah. at, the, at the hot... Oh, okay. Hot jumbo bagel shop he has. Okay. Well, come on back. Thanks for calling. Bye, Rock. Whew. Mister, for my money, anyone who goes around reading meaning into any old gobbledygook deserves everything they get. <laughs> um, oh, I like that joke. <laughs> Where are we at? Huh? I, I don't know. Where are we Should we do more? Yes, we do have we haven't done news yet, though. Let's yeah. just do them. Okay, let's just do them, because we're, we're backed up actually pretty good. Um, okay, now I want to throw one more thing in here before All we move right. on. Um, uh, we have artificial vision. Yes, I heard about have that. Have you read this article? Was it um, Stevie Wonder was going to undertake the I, uh, Stevie Wonder is interested in, in, in a different procedure. Okay. There is one procedure that, uh, where the electrodes attach to the uh, photoreceptors in the eye. Right. This guy has actually got, um, has actually got a, a brain implant. Wow. And he waves a camera around. It's like cyberpunk. And there's like yeah. nine points of of either light or dark that he perceives in like a grid pattern. Hmm. And as he waves it across stuff, he can see the lights blink on and off when it's bright or dark where he's aiming the camera at wow. that point and get a sense of like the shape of large, you know, high contrast objects. I see the light! <laughs> it burns! <laughs> <laughs> well, Arlo's really on form today. <laughs> I tell you. So those of you who have not realized yet that you're living in the future, yeah. get used to it. And you know, with the uh, the yeah. rapid acceleration of technology, you know, this could mean by 2050, blind oh, way before then. You know, yeah. blindness, you know, out of there. Yep. Yeah. You have artificial sight. Absolutely. Let's go to uh, Michael. I think is Michael. Michael. Hi, Hello Michael. There. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Just be in the middle, right? Yeah. Fine new host. I must say, I'm a fan. Thank you. Anyway. I've tried to call last week, but as I'm sure you remember... Um, oh, yes. We were busy. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to thank you for bringing up the uh, point about the black holes or whatever, because as a student of invisible astronomy, that was an excellent point. I tried to make it last week, but I couldn't really get in. Anyway, also, I wanted to say that um, <laughs> you watch, uh, what is it, TVN there a little bit? Uh, yeah. I think that's the new Comedy Central, because I've seen them from time to time. Uh, so. Yeah. It's better than Comedy Central, oh, I yeah. think. Yeah. Hilarious stuff. <laughs> it really yeah. is. And... and I mean, they make some outrageous, or try to make some ridiculous points there, but did they really say that they don't believe in evolution because it stopped? That was one argument that I've heard. Um, I, they, they may, it, it's, getting back to what we were talking about with Rock a few seconds ago, the whole art of rationalizing seems to have been perfected by them. And um, <laughs> they come up with all sorts of bogus pseudoscientific explanations for things. Um, I saw an episode of, of one of their shows one time, and this I thought was tremendously amusing. Um, there, there was, was a medical doctor was the guest, and this doctor was talking about, uh, this was going, getting into the issue of how prayer is supposed to now be a healing thing, and it's supposedly medically established that praying makes you better, and, and disembodied noises from the sound room can make you better, <laughs> things like this. And uh, feel better already. Uh, this, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just feel, uh, <sighs> but, any, um, but anyway, uh, the argument was being made that, um, Okay, there was a study done, apparently, and there was a group of patients who were prayed for. 
and there was a group of patients who weren't prayed for. And apparently among the group of pray patients who were prayed for, there was, say, a 23 or something percent uh, faster healing rate or something like that. And they were just, some, they immediately just put dogpiled on that, and they're like, well, that's it. That proves the word of God. That proves God. It proves God. It proves God. And I was thinking to myself, wait a second. No, it doesn't. Um, first off, all that it proves is that you had a test in which there was a group of patients who were prayed for and one that one wasn't prayed for, and among the group that was prayed for, there happened to be a higher healing rate. And in fact, it doesn't yeah. even prove that. Yeah. Because how do, you, how do you stop there being prayers for like, right. you know, for Tester, people in yeah. general? A lot of yeah. people will pray for like, you know, oh God, I hope that no one gets Ill, <laughs> Ill or everybody who is ill, everybody yeah. who's in hospitals gets better. No. There is no way to weed that out. Yeah. And then what, do they no generate like a prayer field, an anti-prayer yeah. barrier that, that can isolate <laughs> those people from the effects of other people all over the world? Yeah, and they, they, they didn't make the point. There we go. <laughs> you know, and they didn't, make, they, they didn't say, um, you know, <laughs> were the people, were both of those groups of patients taken off their medication for the praying experimental period? Mm -hmm. They didn't make that point. Um, but even there, even then, you know, what, what I immediately wanted to say, and I kind of wished it was, of course, they don't have call-in shows like we do, so we can't take them to task for what they say. But um, I wanted to think, I to say, wait a minute, if you're wanting to establish through this experiment the existence of this omniscient, omnipotent God who answers the prayers of the faithful, then why wasn't every single patient, why was it only a 23% higher healing rate? Right. Uh, why wasn't every single patient in the prayed-for group instantaneously made well. Right. right. I mean... And, and, and can they replicate it? Can yeah. they do the same experiment? Can, and they, can they do and it? And it raises... Yeah. And it ra we had a speaker on this at the, uh, at the uh, Freedom From Religion Foundation convention uh -huh. in San Antonio a couple months back. And uh, this medical doctor reviewed the studies, found that they were doing things like making up their own scale on which to judge how much better people had gotten. Mm -hmm. And, like, <laughs> they were scoring a whole bunch of points for say, not requiring your medi medication for a few days. Uh -huh. And if you had a per, I mean, it, it, it resulted in things like, if you took one person and you didn't give him his medication for a, lo mm -hmm. a long number of days and then he died, yeah. he scored more positive points <laughs> than someone who lived but required a lot of medication. <laughs> okay, that There's work? stuff like that going okay. on. Plus, it raises <laughs> poor huge guy. ethical issues. Yeah. If this is proof that the Christian God exists, are we going to have medical doctors now telling their patients, I'm sorry, you've got to stop being a Hindu, you've got to become a Christian, uh, yeah. you know? Doctors should not be involved in that. Yeah. And it's we've shown it doesn't work, I mean. Right from their audience, probably. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, we no longer have Jim Henson on planet Earth to prove that that whole philosophy doesn't exist, you know? He was a well, anyway, your show's excellent. I watched it all the time. Guy. Thanks. I'm sorry if we deviated from what you originally wanted to talk <laughs> no, about, did we? I didn't have anything to say. I just wanted to bring up the uh, black hole point, because that I thought really hit home there okay. anyway. Well, it's come like, see us at the bagel shop, 1030. Yeah, I try all the time. Something always did, pops did, up. did you stay up to watch the eclipse? Uh, actually, you know what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Maybe it was uh, an intervention of some sort, but I was sitting in my little one-bedroom apartment, and I've got a window to my left that's about a foot wide, and I forgot all about it. And uh, like about oh. nine something on the news, it came on, and I just happened to look. I don't even know why. And I mean, I literally, literally had like four inches to see through. And I saw the moon, so I ran to my balcony and actually saw it, yeah. Yay. Yeah, I, we, I went to a friend of mine's house, and we have telescopes, and we went and looked at the whole time, the whole two hours, where I froze my tail off <laughs> and <laughs> yes, out there looking at evening. this red moon. But it was, it was a spectacular yeah, sight. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, it was incredible. Beautiful sight. All right, well, I'm going to run, but you guys have a good day, and I really right. enjoy the show. Thanks, man. All right. Thanks for calling. All right, bye. Yeah. Well, uh, let me take the opportunity to talk about some science. I, went, cool. I was in Houston yesterday. And I decided to go to the Museum of Natural Science, which is where this place is. This is one f fabulous place to go. Yeah. If you ever get a chance to go to Houston, go to the Museum of Natural History or Natural Science. They have they have an IMAX. They have a oh, planetarium. That must be yeah. They have uh, three floors of just all kinds of exhibits, ranging from an Egyptian to an enormous uh, rock collection in the minerals section. It's, it's just enormous. They've got every kind of rock and every color you could mm -hmm. see. rocks I didn't even know existed. Yeah. Um, they have uh, lots of interactive stuff. They, you can go to these little screens, like for instance, one was uh, a picture of Pangea, and then you hit this thing on the screen with your finger, and as you slide it across, Pangea separates into the world as it is it today. Shows the continental drift. That's yeah. Great. And uh, mm -hmm. they had um, the energy. They have these big films uh, that that span over an entire wall that shows uh, how life began, and mm -hmm. it's directed towards showing where fossil fuels came from. Yeah. 
uh, in uh, this giant three-floor pendulum that's showing gravitational motion, oh, the wow. Earth's motion. It, it, it's it's incredible. They had a, a. I bet they have transitional forms in that museum. There is there's some transitional forms there. Yeah. They have, they don't have quite as good a collection of, of of dinosaur bones as the UT museum does, but mm. it's it's pretty good. There's, yeah. there's a lot of good stuff there, and it's well everything is well done. The displays are just are just beautiful. It was I was like a yeah. kid in a candy store. I was wandering around looking from one to the other, and <laughs> and uh, it, I don't get to go to museums too often because people. Yeah. That I know don't like museums. So. That's a shame. <laughs> you need to convert them, Vic. Yeah, I need to. I try to get them out there, and they're like, no, I don't want to go there. It's boring. Oh, well. Back to the point we were making earlier about how Christians isolate themselves from opposing points of view. We had a caller a few months back argue, trying to argue evolution with us, and Ray asks him, you know, well, go, go to a museum. When was the last time you were at a museum where you could see this stuff? And his answer was, I've never been. <laughs> the first he had I never took, been uh -huh. first to, a never been to a museum. What is Never. wrong with this country? Well, let's no. let's find out, shall we? Um, <laughs> We've had a lot of positive callers so far. Let's see if we can break our, <laughs> break our break uh, our record. Hello? Hi, Fred. Fred. Yeah. Hi, Fred. Hey, um, I'm kind of a fence sitter. I'm trying to figure out what you guys believe. Because okay. I don't. I, I've heard what you don't believe. I don't yeah. know what you believe. Okay. About what? Um. Well, let me let true. me take a let me take a shot at this. I do not use belief as a method of determining what is true or what is false. If you have some evidence for something, you know that it is there. And if you don't have evidence, you can test it or, or try to find evidence for it. But just to believe something, uh, belief is kind of a tricky word because so it. You look for truth. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't sure. look for truth. So how, belief, do you, how do you define it? How do you test it? It depends on the question. I mean, you, you, I'm not a scientist, so there's a lot of stuff that you, uh, you, um, I can't actually physically test. I rely on scientists and their material to inform me of what they found. So the scientists are the, 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 the ones that define the truth. Well, no, 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 no not necessarily. And actually, when, you know, when he says he's not, yeah, yeah, when he says um, he's not a scientist, he means, of course, he's not a scientist by vocation. Right. Uh, you know, I, I, every day, I think everyday people practice science. Yes. A form of science in your day-to-day -day life. Right. You know, driving down the freeway. You know, well, you si you, you simply can't you simply can't take it on faith that you're not going to get in a fiery collision that someone. You know, even if you've driven on the same freeways for 20 years, you still have to use your experience of the way crazy people drive and know exactly what you're doing, and um, and you're utilizing the the evidence of your own experience in order to determine how carefully you control yourself on the highways so that you don't end up in an accident like that. Um, so there, so there are just little ways in which people practice science, which you know, and a, a confusion that. Um, many people have about science is that science is not a competing belief system to religion. Right. And science also does not claim to offer all the answers. I haven't said anything about religion at all. I'm trying to find out what you believe. All right. Okay. So okay. It would help. Any, are you saying that, that all of existence can be determined by positivism where you put up an experiment and say, this is the experiment and this is true and this is not true? Or, that's okay. What, I'm trying to get to. What, do you, what, is the, what are you promoting? I, I've heard what you don't want to do. Right, okay, we understand. Another thing, but what, well, I understand what you're saying. Okay. Uh, Jeff, you All right, yeah, I would like to address this. Okay. Um, what, what I do is I rely on the most rational explanation that has been offered for all of the available evidence on any question. And that is not the same as a claim of having absolute truth. Anybody who, who tells you that they have a, a, a line on absolute truth is trying to sell you something because it's just not possible. But does it exist? It violates what? Does it exist? Does a what absolute exist? Absolute truth, you mean? Is there an objective reality? It appears that there is. And all we can go on is the evidence that we have. You know, mountains don't appear and disappear instantly, you know, at, at, on some kind of random whim. There appears to be stability and uh, and and natural law. Natural and laws. The, the universe appears to exist in an objective sense. Uh, so far, that is the evidence. So you believe that there is an absolute truth. I like Vic. I try to stay away from the word believe because the word believe is often meant okay, well, as uh, what? No, let me finish. This is important. This is really important. The word believe is often meant to indicate absolute well, certainty and uh, and we don't mean that huh? is there truth or is there not truth is there tr there okay. appears well, to be again, an objective reality yeah. 
let, let me tr let if me you want more this. than that, if you yeah. want any of us to say absolutely for sure there is truth or there isn't, we're not going to say that. Let, we know better. Let, let me it's the people that don't know better that you have yeah. to watch out for. Let me also try to address this. I think, I think, sir, that what you're when you say is there truth or isn't truth, I think what you're what you're trying to get at is are we of the opinion that there is a capital T truth? In other words, there there is one truth. Um, that tends to apply to be applicable to everything. I don't know that I would take that position. I think that you have to look at things on a case by case basis. So um, but, but, but see, but, but, but see, when you, when you say is there truth or isn't there truth, it's that question you have to understand is really pretty vague. Yeah. And so I would have to ask first well, off, well, when you say tr is vague, that's what I'm trying to get to. Well, well yeah. All you've told me so okay. far is what you don't believe, but you won't stand up and say. This is what I'm saying. This is truth. This is the way things are. And that's well, and well, that's because, and, and we're not going to say that. Say that that's about your rational arguments because you haven't said anything last We're year. not. Well, no, no. Well, okay, you're, you're not. You're, you're okay. not understanding us. You're not understanding where we're. At. We are not taking the position that there is a capital T truth that we are trying to promote. Okay. No, what you're trying to do is promote yourself in saying that that because this thing does not exist. We have a belief system. You're saying there's not a God. No, there's not no, a no, no, no. No, you're, you're, you're no, you, you don't no, no, understand us. Of what you don't believe, but you're not telling me. Let's leave out all the all the semantics and tell me. If you were to say, tell, explain the world to me. What's the fundamental reason? What's the fundamental See. essence of what? What we're about the world? Uh, what about the world do you want to explain? Well, let me let me let me take no, this. No, step. Well, it's just uh, go ahead. Once go ahead. We have a turn. What's well? This is it's this is getting wrong. back to um, what I mentioned earlier about uh, the friend that I was speaking to the other day and the questions that she were asking. I don't want to hear about the friends you had. Well, sir, see here you go. Now. See now, now you're, you're using tactics. You're trying not. You're not allowing us to answer you. Okay. Um, what uh, you know, the questions that I was being asked were rooted in presuppositions that I didn't agree with. And you're asking, basically, what I'm hearing is that uh, what you're asking us today, you know, you're trying to pin out, what do you believe? What are you trying to say is the truth? What do you the presuppositions of your question is that there is one, is that there is an overriding truth, and that um, we are attempting in our own way to sort of find this, but we're not making it clear to you. And, and what we're trying to explain to you is that we don't it's take that position that there is one truth that explains it all. We're saying that, you know, reality is uh, something that uh, must be studied. You're saying you want to pick one day by day, which everyone suits you. No, no, no. No, no that's not at all. Not correct. That's not at all. You look at specific ins <coughs> if, uh, instances, whatever it is that you're trying to study at a given time, you look at the evidences for that proposition, you weigh them. If right. there so are you're, evidences... You're, you're, saying, you're saying to me, if you're laying down logic, mm -hmm. the rudimentary fundamentals of logic say that there is a background where if two things are true, they cannot be conflicting. They cannot, they cannot negate each other. If, they are, if there's a truth, all the elements of truth are true, and the tr two truths cannot negate each other in a, in a logical world. Oh, okay, so, uh, so I'm not... I think we agree with that. Yeah, so... Okay, well, see, that's what you're I'm trying to get to. Is what yeah. So what you're saying is, I don't want to say I believe this, right? because... I, you still have not said. All right. This let me let me take where a turn. I, where I where I stand I mean, are you well, let, let Vic go first. In a materialistic, are, is, is I, material I world. I mean, is this it? Atoms and, and electrons flying around in a okay. In a, in a big accidental. I, I'm going to try to I'm going to try to answer you, okay. but I'm going to use the word think instead of the word believe. Is that okay? Um, well, you can do that for right now because you can you, we can talk about thinking later. But go ahead. Thing. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I I don't know why you would give, give well. Such I short do trip, know. I do know why. Or say no. Because say you're no. because the call, right. caller, okay. you're yeah. trying to position us into no, I, a corner I, I, where you can I, go on. We have heard this argument before. You are, are okay. Sitting there saying let, that nobody let, wants to be rational with you, and I'm asking for rational explanations of what you know or what you think. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to tell you. Dan, okay. To I'm going to okay, tell you. I think that there is not a God. No, don't, don't tell I, me you don't think. What see, do he's you using think? tactics on you. I this think is that there tactics. is not a God. So what is I it? think that the universe is the result of natural processes. The natural process, so you, so you think there's a natural process? I think that there, is an, that there are natural processes natural in the universe. Process. And I further think that that is the sensible 
thing to think, given the available evidence and a rational evaluation of that evidence. Well, rational people who try to be rational don't believe that they are being irrational, which is you're making evidence of that. That's true. That's true. The way to find out, if you think that I, if you think that I am not being rational in my evaluation of the evidence, then you can go ahead and try to show where my thinking has gone wrong. Yeah. You're perfectly entitled. You present conflicting evidence. Which evidence? Right. Uh, Which but, evidence? But, but okay. sir, well, essentially but what would you... Wait, 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 what was the question? You asked me about conflicting evidence, and I don't know what evidence you're talking about because I'm still trying to get to a statement. You see, mm -hmm. you're standing against this, these other statements. Mm -hmm. that there's, a, that there's a God, there's a truth, all this. But until you make a statement, nobody can, can ask you about, your, about what you think or what you know. And, and I think the reason that you're, that you're finding that problem with us is that we will not take a position on things that we don't know. For example, the, uh, the cause, the, re, the, well, listen, the process to, by which saying. our universe came into existence, right? That's the big one. Let's just go straight to that. We don't know. Scientists don't know exactly why we have a universe, right? I think you'll agree with that. So you won't find us saying that we think we know for sure what that reason is because we don't know for sure what that reason is, and we'll tell you so, honestly. Okay, but you say you don't know, but you'll say that, that other people don't know if they're taking a position that they say that there's some divinity involved. You're just saying that you know that that's wrong. Well, know I know, reason. I do know that it is wrong, given the available evidence, yes to leap to the conclusion that the universe is the result of the intervention of some cosmic, omniscient, omnipotent, omnibenevolent God. Right. I know that. Yeah. So because the, we don't believe that there is evidence to support that proposition. Right. Right. See, what, here's, here's, here's where we're not connecting, sir. Um, you're wanting us to take a position and on a, a, a firm position, once again, getting back to the capital T truth. And what we're trying to explain to you is that that's not how we view things, okay? What we right, do... We only it, view things in well, contrast to someone who says that they know, and they hold it up, and they lay out the evidence, and they lay out the facts, and, and if, if the thousands of years, which uh -huh. is, by the way, where your science came from, right? I'm sorry, I missed, I'm sorry I missed that. Well, where, where, did, where did the science that you're promoting as being the, the rule of evidence for, de, for defining what you think or what you know, where did that science come from? It's just a process that uh, human beings have practiced in one form or another. We worked it out. Of time. We worked it out. You yeah. guys weren't around when it was worked out. How so? did it get worked out? It's still being worked out. It's still being worked out. Oh, how did it start? Uh, well, we don't know. Somebody who the, decided it to started one day, about, Og the caveman <laughs> hit a rock against another rock, and it made fire. I mean, all right. it's... <laughs> we're, well, we're, being, we're being asked to move on to the next caller. Yeah, we, uh, we, we uh, would you like to ask us one first, more question? Statement first, because here's what happened over the course of the last couple of minutes. Kay. Okay. You have not given a rational being something to start a discussion with you on your own terms. You see, what you're, you define yourselves by saying something does not exist. How can you believe a whole system that only defines itself about something that doesn't exist if it doesn't exist? Okay, okay. we'll respond to that. Thanks we, for your we'll call. We'll respond to that. We have to get to the next call or so, but we'll answer you. Thanks for calling. Um, we, <laughs> that was funny. He was using tactics. The, the only reason well, that we not. bother calling ourselves atheists is because we're in a society where um, if you don't believe like everybody else, you stand out and we may as well have a name for ourselves, right? And uh, the name is, we're the guys that don't believe what those guys believe. Right. That's all there is to it. Um, I don't define myself on the basis, uh, on like a starting assumption that there's no God. What I do is I look at the available evidence and I evaluate that evidence rationally and I will go with the most reasonable explanation to account for the available evidence. And I do that in all things as much as I can. Not being perfect, I may make some mistakes. But in general, that's what I am about. Mm -hmm. um, and so I have no problem sitting here and saying, there's some people out there, the vast majority of people, the ones we're named for uh -huh. not being part of. <laughs> I have no problem sitting here saying, those people are just wrong. 
Yeah. They may, there, may, there may actually be a God, right? But even if there is, those people are just wrong. And the reason they're wrong is that they are not basing their belief in God on a rational evaluation of all of the available evidence. If there's a God, the time to believe in that God is after the evidence and a rational evaluation of the evidence makes it silly not to believe. And we're not at that point. Yeah. We're just not. But I, there, We were at that point before, yeah. right? Thousands of years ago, before we had science, before when all we had was like, oh, there's all this stuff going on, we don't understand any of it, I'm willing to cut religion some slack and say, given the available evidence, that was a reasonable assumption to leap to. Yeah. We're not there now, okay? That our knowledge has moved on. We no longer have this imperative to come up with some kind of super, supernatural explanation for things. We have a vast uh, base of scientific knowledge that explains so much stuff that it, th there's no excuse for continuing to, to reach out for supernatural explanation. As the days Rationally. go by, we face the increasing inevitability that we are alone in a godless, uninhabited, hostile, and meaningless universe. Still, we've got to laugh at this. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that, <laughs> thank you, Arlo. Our that was good, Arlo. Um, but I think there was, where the caller, just to get back to what the last caller was asking us, he was trying to get us to take a, a, a position mm -hmm. of capital K knowledge, capital T truth, and you have to understand that's not what it's about. What we, we utilize a process by which we arrive at truths, but it is an on, it's, it's a process of learning. Right. Once again, science is not a belief system. Science is a, is a method by which, through experimentation and testing things, you obtain knowledge, but about specific things. You right. know? And, he, we, and what I think the caller wanted from us was this grand overriding philosophy of everything. Right. And we just and the answer to his question is we don't do that, you know. Yeah, right. And we don't. And it's silly to do that. And we don't encourage doing because that because claims of absolute knowledge right. violate uh, the limits of of uh, the speed of light. We <laughs> cannot possibly know what is going on right now. Uh, a, 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 you know, a light, light a light second away. away from where we are. We yeah. cannot know precisely. It violates information theory. Mm -hmm. It violates. Uh, uh, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. There are all kinds of reasons why it is, all the evidence is that it's absolutely impossible to know absolute truth for sure. Right. So the question is, then how do you operate? And the answer to that question is, you do the best you can, and that's what we do. Right. We look at the evidence that is available and draw the most rational conclusions from the available evidence, period. Which and anybody right. not doing that is being silly even if it turns out that uh, on random issues they happen to be correct. Mm -hmm. People can guess wildly and occasionally be right. <coughs> that doesn't mean they're, that they're being smart about it. Right. Now you have to recognize that that was uh, some fundamentalist tactics being used. Oh on. sure, and then you know, the, the, he, he was trying to get us yes. into a corner well, he, where we yeah. use the B word, yeah. right? Yeah. And then he could to try to position us, you know, to have to take certain yeah. responsibilities that we don't have to take because we don't use that B word not in the sense that he wants us to use it. Right. Um, yeah, Want to remind people again of the bagel shop meeting at 10.30, right after the end of the show. It's right. uh, 15 minutes from now or so. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, uh, that is for atheists and atheist-friendly people to come down and socialize. It is not a venue for, uh, for theists to come in and try to change our opinions. You can do that here on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's go to... They offer discussion. Mike? Yeah. Mike? Yes, hi guys. Hi. hi. Mike. How you I doing? I just wanted to, uh, to talk for a few minutes with you. Um, please don't corner me into the fundamentalist stance, <laughs> because I'm not. Okay. I, oh, okay. I do consider myself a Christian, however. Okay. All right. Um, it, um, okay, but before you get started, let me clarify something. There are a select group of people, the fundamentalists, who are just adamant about converting everybody. Now, mainstream yeah. Christians don't really have a problem with us. We can talk, and I, I know Christians myself, and they don't have a problem with me at all. It's just those fundies that come after us with a vengeance. Okay, yeah, and they come after us too, the main Yeah, yeah they <laughs> do everybody. So I even know Christians who think fundamentalists are stupid, so. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's, uh, yeah, I, I kind of agree with you on that. Um, <laughs> a lot of the stances that you're taking um, talk about rationalism and, and being rational about uh, your approach, and um, I, I agree with you on, on quite a bit of what you're saying. I think you've, you've thought out the issues pretty well, and 
uh, just wanted to ask you, um, you know, uh, up on the screen here, it talks about the atheist experience, mm -hmm. but yet you talk, uh, at least your, your... Uh-oh, did we lose him? Uh-oh. Oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Um, caller, you just got cut off. We don't know why. We... Oh. Uh-oh. Something happened to Something the phone. Uh, please we, call back. We're oh, so oh, sorry. We might not get to We are so... We didn't... That was a complete if, accident. We didn't mean for that to happen. We have a line open. Call back right now. Yeah, please call back right now. And as soon as we see your name again, we'll put you back on. Yeah, sorry. That technically... Shall we move on to the next one? Live. We don't know if he'll call back or not. Live cable access TV. Yeah. Sorry. Um, uh, I want... I want to, <laughs> yeah, I wanted to... I was wanting to hear where he was going with that. Keith, yeah. Keith who's next? Keith? Or are we waiting to see if we got him back? Oh. Well, we can, We're getting near to the end here. I, okay. Go with the next one. Okay. Let's let's take let's take um, Amber because we haven't heard from uh, Amber. Okay. We'll take Amber. Okay. On. Amber, hello. Hello. Amber. No, we've got nothing in here. We got phones seem to sound dead, guys. Hello. Oh, hi, Amber. There you are. Hi. hi, Amber. Hi, Amber. No, this is Donna. Oh, Donna. Donna. All right. We're, we're, we're having serious phone problems. <laughs> Go ahead. What's your question? Um, hi. Actually, it's just an observation. Um, I'm one of those fundamentalist Christians that you speak of. Uh -huh. Well, well we, don't, we don't hate you. <laughs> yeah, we don't hate you at all. I don't hate y'all either. Yeah, good. Okay. We love everyone. It's cute. Um, I, I, don't, I know Atheism you don't want to talk about the B word, but uh -huh. that is sort of the basis of what we're all talking about, our beliefs, and that's the basis of every human being is yeah. the belief system. No, well, we don't know that we no. agree with. We wouldn't. I have things that I know and things that I don't know. I don't believe in the things that I know because I know them. Mm -hmm. and I don't believe in the things that I don't know because I don't know them. <laughs> well, which is what is the basis of Christianity and then the Bible is believing belief, things yes. that are we yes. know. Yes, that are we know that. Provable. Right. Yep. And we know that, and we think that's that's very very unfortunate. And yeah. when I was a non-believer, I did basically believe in the things I could see, feel, touch, smell. And when I became a believer, it was, it was the hardest thing in the world I've ever done. And, yeah. I, and I think, I hate to say this, but I think it's a male thing that... <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, there, are, there are women in our group, our coach. Yeah, a large yeah. number of women but in it's, our group. It's, it's are you saying we have the dumb stick? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think to the extent that that's true, it's probably upbringing. Mm -hmm. yeah. but it, well, I just think it's very difficult for men mainly to give up control to I mean I'm sure you've all heard this prayer of salvation where it's like I give up control of my yeah. life yeah I have a major yes. problem with that prayer yeah the yes. pro I, I see we look at it in exactly the opposite way uh -huh. I think we would say it's way too easy for g given the way women are raised in our society it's they're way too eager to give up control giving up control is a bad thing from our point of view Giving up control of what, then? Um, well, your belief. The, you know, the, the process of you know, like rationally deciding what to believe, to just give that up because of some authoritarian claims that there's some cosmic guy that you need to, that you need to bow down before, that's bad. It's just a bad thing. Yeah. People should be you know, smart and think about stuff yeah, right. and not be foolish and just do well, what they're told. People should think critically. Yeah. You know, you yeah. should, whatever, any proposition that you are given, you should not take it at faith. I mean, anything, even if right. it's your best friend, your mother, your father, you don't take Things propositions faith. at faith at yeah. face value. You weigh them, you think about them, you think about them critically. Um, if you uh, have evidence to bring to bear that um, puts uh, the lie to that proposition, then you challenge the proposition. Or if you can see evidence around you that supports the proposition, then it's safe for you to accept it as a viable proposition. But, you know, but to simply surrender yourself, as it were, um, yeah. to, to yeah. some sort, to a faith-based um, supernatural belief system, we think is, is misguided. We think it's sort of an, an, a, an abuse of, of the thinking process. Yeah, take that it's kind of thinking and apply it to anything else. Yeah, I mean, right? it's... But it doesn't it, apply to anything else. Well, why it, not? It could, I mean, the why thing is, why is Why is belief in the Christian God special? How come it's okay to believe in a Christian God without any evidence and not okay to believe in, say, uh, Shiva or Odin or, 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 uh, or that there are space aliens in moving invisibly amongst us or any other thing that you can't prove? Why is belief in the Christian God special? Why does it get to 
uh, uh, to ignore the fundamental need for a rational examination of the evidence. Because of something I can't prove to any of you. I mean, you cannot. Yeah. You cannot prove. And I don't think that God is meant to be proved. Well, <laughs> that he's then, not meant to be believed. Then he's not yeah. meant to be believed, ma'am. I mean, it's, 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 that is, um, getting back it's to... Not like we like to use that meant uh, word either. I mean, we're, we're, we're <laughs> yeah, we don't like, to like to use that meant word, right. Yeah. But see, that's, that's a problem that we have, ma'am, that we feel that that is internally, that, that mode of thinking is internally at war with itself. It's self-contradictory to say the very fact that I cannot prove or even substantiate this claim is my reason for believing in it is um, just not a rational process. I mean, we're sorry to no, say she that. Agrees I, 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 she agrees with that. She agrees with that. But, but she does it, it can't anyway. be proven. But, 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 but uh, ma'am, we, th we think that what you don't understand is that there's nothing special about belief in God that makes it, uh, makes that one question, uh, a, you know, a, it, it makes that appropriate yeah. to give up your rational thought processes just to get a positive answer to that yeah, question. Belief in God There's is really nothing special about it. It's like any other question. Mm -hmm. If you if you abandon your rational thought processes about anything else, I think you'd agree. Oh, that's a silly thing to do. We yeah. think that 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 applies in all cases, and 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 that the Christian God does not get a yeah. you know get well, out of jail. Belief in God is, is not subject to a different set of rules than any other area of inquiry. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's it that's okay. that's our opinion. Thanks for your call. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank We're so you. okay. Hope we made it clear. Good luck. Have bye a bye. nice day. Okay. And we appreciate that call. That was a very nice yeah, call from see, a fundamentalist. That was a yeah. nice Christian call. We don't hate you. Yeah, we just no. think you're wrong. And we love it when you call. And we and boy, we have eight minutes and a full slate. And we have is it Don on four? Okay. Let's go to Don. Don. Hello, Don. <laughs> yeah. You are Don, right? I'm just sitting there. Everybody believes in in God and and all the preachers and everything. They really believe in Jim Baker and Reggie White. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe some of them. All back to us and Pat Robinson and the prayer. One night I heard Pat Robinson say, the woman will pray for you. And this one woman called in and said, you've been praying for me for five years and nothing's happened. I'm still <laughs> I was. Someone and actually called said, into the well, show and said that? He said, well, God's testing you. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. I always say that. And there's always the, the there's always the line of retreat. It's they understandable, have. given that not only can nobody know everything, but each of us tends to specialize in something or other. You know. And then in the next statement, uh, he said out of his mouth, he said, "Since God's testing you, he said maybe he just wasn't taking your medicine right." <laughs> 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 maybe you didn't send you yeah. know, him enough yeah, money. Yeah, maybe you didn't send him, had send him your but love gift. It's, it's understandable that people look to authority figures for their information. I mean, mm -hmm. Vic was pointing out, yeah, he turns to professional scientists for information about science. Right. I do, too. But the difference but there is that we listen to what they say and then we think about it. Yeah. We don't, I know, we yeah, don't I, turn it, on, we don't pick up Scientific American, read something, and then just immediately take it as gospel. I know yeah. just enough about science just about enough about the process of science to tell when somebody is pitching me a story about something scientific, I can tell whether they're really being scientific about their thinking or not, right? Mm -hmm. I can't know if they're concocting data. I can't know that, you know, just by reading a newspaper article mm -hmm. uh, you can't or know a magazine article. they've actually article. reported the, the results of their test accurately. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so there, of course, <coughs> I, we, you know, even... If there's a question, you can go to another source. The thing about science is that uh, it's a thing about peer review, where you put your scientific uh, evaluation right. for somebody else who is also a professional yeah. scientist to evaluate to see if you did it right, and to see if they can come with the same conclusion right. and, and duplicate the results. And there's no parallel to that yeah. in Christianity, None. There right. or in, in any, or any kind faith of religious, faith-based faith organization, because or, yeah. you can't, right? Because yeah. it's faith. Yeah, fundamentally, the fundamentally there, is n there is nothing that, uh, that Pat Robertson or, or any of those guys knows knows <laughs> that, that, is, that is more than any of their followers know. They just believe, assuming that they're not lying about believing just to rake in the dough, right? Mm -hmm. I'll cut them that slack. <laughs> but there is no, since it can't be proven, their religious leaders don't know any more than, than they do. But they believe them because it, you know, in a yeah. general sense, it makes sense to turn to people who ought to know more about certain questions than you do and try to get your information from them. Right, that makes yeah. sense. But one, <laughs> one night on Trinity, on on their big uh, primetime show, praise the Lord, uh, Paul Crouch, who's the head of the network, and he, said, he looked right into the camera, and he said, you know.
believe in Jesus with your heart, with all your heart. Don't try to figure him out with your mind because you'll never get it. Just believe with your heart. I mean, he, so he said those exact words. Whoa, yeah. that's and a greater good. appeal to irrationalism could not be made, I don't think. <laughs> you know, I mean... Whoa! Wow, that was bizarre. Yeah. Well, like I think we're... I wow, think that might be our warning that we're running out of time. Thanks yeah. very much for your call. That only says 60 minutes. Are we... Are I think the clock is... Oh, out of while. Okay. This yeah. is not five minutes yet? Ray, are you playing with the How buttons again? We got? Uh, we're having we have so many technical problems. Four minutes. No, to that my yeah. watch is my watch okay. is wrong. How how much time? Five minutes. Okay. Okay. Oh, there you go. Oh, sorry, but caller, but thanks for calling anyway. Bye, Mike. Well, we should move on and try to get more yeah. in. Uh, Mike so, on two. Mike. Mike on two. Mike on two. Hello, Mike. Mike. Hello. Hi, Mike. Back. Sorry about that. No problem. Go ahead, man. No problem. Okay, we got limited time. Okay, I'll I'll try to make it quick. Um, it, it sounds to me that. Um, the way that you're, uh, quote-unquote, arguing your point is that you are believing in a process. You are thinking you have a lot of truth into the natural process. If, if that's the case, couldn't that be called your God? Uh, All right. No. Uh, no. Uh, because, well, first off, <laughs> it's, not, it's not supernatural, and it's not something that uh, you know, we cannot exempt. What we're, not, what we're talking about is a process. Okay. We're talking about a process by which you arrive at knowledge through the examination of evidence and, we, and experience. And, and there was that B word again, right? You know. We try not to use the word believe because it can, belief can mean anything from, I just kind of assume that this is true, but, you know, just kind of, all the way to, I absolutely, completely yeah, absolutely. fixate on this completely, you know, Zealotry. entirely, yeah. and there's no way I can possibly be dissuaded. Okay, okay. yeah, I, I'm trying It can to be anything in there, so we try not to use that. We rely on science, because, as far as we can tell, it works. Okay, right? well, ag agreed there, Nay. I, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. But, um, you know, get beyond the, the fundamentalist view of God has to be a supernatural form, okay. and talk about the, the process. You're, you know, you, you, you have a... Um, an understanding, a reliance on the natural process. Okay. Okay. Reliance on. I'm not sure what you well, mean by yeah. that. Well, yeah. What do you mean by we have you, a reliance on it? You, are you, you just rely, saying that that's what we you use? You rely on that process to guide you to to figure out no, what, we re rely, what reality is about. No, we rely on the process of science. Right. And and tell us what nature okay. is all about. And by science, we mean the act of examining, weighing evidence, yeah. arguing, debating, and, and then drawing conclusions based upon that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and um, you know, one, one of the points you were making is you, you know, Christians, uh, and, and I'm hoping you're meaning more fundamental Christians, um, basically suspend their belief in rational thought to believe in a God. No, I, I extend but, that to all uh, I, Christians that believe in anything like the standard depiction of God. Okay, but there, there's there's quite a few Christians that don't believe in that standard view. Okay, and, most, and, and a lot of more progressive thought in Christianity okay. is way beyond. Uh, what okay, can you can you give us in the limited time we have the progressive uh, concept of God, the progressive Christian concept of God? Okay, um, are you familiar with uh, the process thought model that's based out of um, um, Alfred Alfred Whitehead? A um, lot a lot of the um, the California uh, Methodist. Uh, Church of Claremont in, in particular. No, can you sum it up? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah. It's at the end of the show now. We Dang may have it. to have you. Yeah, we might. We might. We might. We might want to ask you to. In one sentence, yeah. God is a series of processes that's constantly um, in change and okay. interacting with uh, <laughs> what we call reality. That sounds to me like uh, pantheism. Is that pantheism? Um, no. No. Is is this process the the, the ser series of changes that you're talking about? Is it uh, self-aware? Um, does it have a mind? Does it have opinions about things, or does it just uh, we, happen? Uh, it's a, it's a divergence of that, but it's it, it, you, you can even go to the point that we are not separate of it. Yeah, but okay, no, so no, that, no, that sounds like if there's, a, if new there's age a guy, kind of. if there's a guy to receive prayers and do something no, about it, no, right? Okay. No, no, or a no, mind, no, or a consciousness, okay, so or the, anything. This is sounding to me more pantheism. more like a or unitarianism. Well, okay, yeah. go ahead. Sir? No, go, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it sounds to me more like a, a kind of the Unitarian concept of God in that the universe is God and that we're part of the universe, therefore we're all part of God and that God, God is everything. Um, and I, well, I don't know that there's evidence to back that up either, but um, yeah, it's... 
Now that's just what it sounds like yeah. to me. Is, may I? Yeah, do you, I mean, if, if, but if it gets back to the basic Christian concept in, in that God is a deity that should be worshipped, whether you view this deity as this enormous supernatural father with a big long white beard who loves us and you know, sends the good people to heaven and the bad people to hell, or if you believe in just this universal Godhead, if you are talking about fundamentally a deity that should be worshipped, and the existence of this deity has to be taken on faith, then I think um, you're back to um, what is essentially a, a fundamentally irrational process, which is yeah. just... Why the, worship that? The, yeah, I, I think you're talking about the practice of Christianity ra rather than the theology. Well, what's the difference? Oh, quite a bit. Uh, I, 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 quite a bit. I, don't, I don't care which one we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. What I care about is, okay, you've given us this, this progressive view of God as just the sum total of everything that's going on. Is, would that right? be fair? So is that roughly right? Okay. Why worship that? What What you, you is the point worship to worship part that? of it? Oh, you don't worship you don't it. Worship. Okay. So can we okay. stop having churches? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I I, I kind of agree that uh, a lot of what <laughs> the churches are doing right now are very detrimental. Okay. Can All right. We, well, then we agree on that. And what do you do with that? You don't worship it. It's, it's right? kind of a You don't have churches. What do you do with that? Who cares then? Yeah. I think it's it's kind of a community approach, uh, just like the original churches were. It's the support area. It's where you go for. It's kind of what you guys are doing here. Yeah, mm, we want to know well, what that is. The worship, that that sum total of what's going on. We want to know what that is, but we don't. We don't. We don't have put it on a pedestal. But, we but put the process by the which we may put the process by which we find out what is going on uh, on some kind of pedestal, right? Because it works. We can show that 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 produces results. What is the point to putting this sum total of everything on a pedestal yeah. for any reason at all? What's I, the no, point of labeling it? Yeah. Who cares? I, I but now you're asking me for a capital T. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Fair enough. But um, okay. Uh, uh, well, yeah. that's because that's generally what uh, you know theistic people claim to have. It's no. probably the only reason. Yeah. Well, but you don't claim to have that. But yeah, I guess we're saying then that. Um, oh, didn't you say you called yourself a Christian? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, but uh, would you describe yourself as this sort of progress progressive Christian or a traditional Christian? No, uh, extremely pr uh, progressive, but I have a lot of traditional values. Okay. okay. Oh, well, we'll accept that. We all that. have traditional yeah, values. Yeah, there's, there's nothing wrong with a lot of traditional society. battles, but okay. there is... There is something wrong with some other traditional values. Yeah. So I, <laughs> All right. Do, uh, I, uh, we, we're, we're, we're running out of time, uh, Mike, I think. We're okay, I just want to urge you guys, do, do take a look at uh, Alfred North Whitehead, Protestant right. Theology. Yeah, we'll try. Um, because you guys are rational guys, I think you guys would find a lot of value in that. Oh, you might find it yeah, interesting. I'm, I'm, oh, we're getting love now. I, 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 you must okay. be out every to go out there. Oh, so yeah, we just want to know what the point is of, yeah. of, of, of even bothering to label that. We certainly don't dispute that the sum total of everything that's going on is going on. Of course it is. Who cares? Mm -hmm. But thanks for calling. Thanks, and we're, Aurora, we're sorry we didn't get to you. Um, but I don't think we have time Aurora. for it. Yeah, uh, re reminding everyone once again of the bagel shop meeting. Um, hot jumbo bagel shop at the corner, uh, near the corner of 5th and Lavaca. Next to... Uh, uh, Starting right away after the end of the show, all atheists and atheist-friendly people are invited down to uh, hang out, socialize, and, yeah. uh, and, and and talk. And thanks for letting me come on this week, guys. Enjoyed it. Yeah, you, you did really you were, well. You did um, a great job. Thank you. I, I hope I get next week. Again. I'm going to try to dig up some information on this teacher who was escorted out of a school because they found she's out she wicked. Yeah. Wicked. Yeah. Bye. -bye. That ought to be fun. Bye, Bye everyone. We, we don't thing. really know exactly how much time we got left. Oh well. You can two, do minutes. Oh, two minutes. Two minutes. Let's, have the, credits. Let's have the credits down then. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> it's a fade button. Two minutes? Well, but three minutes ago, you gave us a three-minute uh, warning. What do you got? Do you have some news you want to throw? Let's talk about off. this Wiccan lady. Okay. Well, what, so what, what I know about it so far was that she um, uh, she has a website, and they had some pictures of some frontal nudity for they have some nudist worship, or uh, some portion of their uh, religion involves you know, some nudity. Involves some nudity, and it was on their website. Mm -hmm. And it was found out by the, the school board, and they went, got her, and escorted her off the property and ordered her not to have any contact with any of the children. She's an 11th grade teacher, and mm -hmm. they were having a meeting talking about how she's, um, they don't want to have any of the corrupting influences, which means anything other than Christian to them, yeah. Um, yeah. in their school. Pretty this is going straight to court, people. You, sh you can't do this, and uh, the, the website's irrelevant. She did not take it to school, she was not teaching Wiccan at school. In fact, nobody knew about it until this website. Okay, now it's our time. Now, one, one minute. minute. Okay. Um, so now I am a witch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I have massive problems with Wicca. It, it, it's a, to me, it's a silly. Right. But they have but as much right to be teachers as much, anybody yeah, else. Exactly. Yeah. She Satanist. was doing her job. It is not against the law for a Satanist to be a teacher as long as he doesn't use his uh, position of authority from the government to turn other people you know, into right. Satanists. 
Okay. All right, folks. Do we have the love thing? No, there, Colin. Yeah. Thank you all for watching. We'll trails. see you next week. The world needs trails. Oh, we Christians, we don't hate you. We just think you're wrong. Jesus. Hey, there you go. <laughs> oh! 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 There is no objective reality. Look what's happening. <laughs> the black hole we can't see is sucking us in. <laughs> Are we done? No. We're still not done. We're still not up here. Come on, we need to stop working again. Fade button. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. Arlo, music, please. <laughs> CDs out. Oh, okay. Well, we don't know if we're on the air or off the air now or not, but we're just having fun. Uh, okay. Bye bye. <laughs> okay. <laughs>